Hey folks, welcome back. This is going to be part two, uh, follow up to my fuel system issues with my 1938 Chrysler. Um, my last video you saw, I was out for a cruise and um, I had too much fuel pressure or something and, and uh, I tested it and I did find high fuel pressure and I've been digging in and trying to find out why. Um, it has a Holley fuel pressure regulator on it. You've seen that. I'm going to get into that. I learned something because um, we're all learning every day or there's so much to learn and it's fun. I do enjoy it. It, it uh, somehow stimulates my brain when I have a puzzle and a challenge to figure out. I, I went out and I found a Holley fuel pressure regulator repair kit. It comes with two springs, a red one and just a standard metal one. Uh, the red one is for low pressure from one to four PSI. And the standard one is for, um, I think it's five to nine PSI. And it came with a new rubber diaphragm. So there was a problem in the past. They put the high pressure spring in the regulators that were labeled as low pressure. And there's a little bit of confusion out there because if, if you look up the part number for this kit, it tells you to use the red spring in the low pressure regulator and the gold or non-red, whatever it is, it's standard. That's the heavier spring for the higher pressure regulator. But it's confusing because at the factory, they're all just gold anodized springs. So that led me down a little bit of a path, thinking I had the wrong spring in my regulator. But after I got this kit, I got it sorted out. So here we go. Well, I didn't know this when I had that fuel regulator apart, but there's a gold spring in it. And then when I found out today about the two different colored springs, I thought, that's interesting. Mine has a gold spring in it, and it says it's from 1 to 4 PSI. So it's the wrong spring, right? I think. So then I phone around. Auto parts store has one in stock. So I run down there and get it. I buy a brand new regulator, thinking this one's screwed. I'll get a new one, right? I get it home. I take the cover off. It's got the gold anodized spring in it as well. So I get looking and Holly also sells a kit with the diaphragm and it comes with two springs, the gold one and the red one. So you could rebuild either pump with a new diaphragm and replace the spring. And the kit's like seven bucks. Okay, so we got the right springs coming. So I'm, I'm t I took the brand new regulator back and uh, they took it back and I got the spring kit coming. I'm going to put a new diaphragm and the proper spring in this fuel pressure regulator that I already have here and save about 60 bucks or so, 70 bucks or something. And try it. Why not? We're having fun. We're learning. We're going to put the fuel pressure gauge on it again. Now I won't have those till tomorrow, but in the meantime. Okay, we have the old regulator apart and there's the spring. It's kind of gold colored. Okay, so I maybe should have taped recorded, not taped. You can tell I'm old. We don't tape things anymore. I should have recorded maybe this when I took it apart. I put the red spring in. There's the old spring, the gold one. When I compare it to the heavier spring that came in the kit, it does look shorter. It is shorter. I don't know if you can see the difference. And it's not quite as heavy. And I, I the tension this one feels easier to crush than this one. I, I'm i starting to think that it had the right spring, but it wasn't red, so that threw me off. But what I did find is I got in there, here the diaphragm, I think it's a victim of ethanol. I'm seeing this rubber, it's broke down, it's dried up. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's flaking out pretty good. Spring that was in there, the high pressure spring, I have the red one in there. It should be right. You can see it. But I'm thinking now it's this. We got a new diaphragm too. This little rebuild kit that I got from Holly there. It came with a new diaphragm and two new springs. So put it back together. The other thing I'm going to promote here is this. High performance thread sealant. Um, you may find that this white tape here. Teflon tape. Gasoline just eats it. It's not a good thing to be sealing gas fittings with. Um, I'm going to leave that untouched, I think. Nah, no, I'm probably going to take it apart and reseal it. And I'm going to put this on there. It's good for gasoline. 
and I'm going to uh, get her sealed up, put it on this thread. When I first bought the car, this is where it was leaking out of this area right here. And I wonder what the originally it might have been sealed with. It's interesting, I don't know. There's a groove cut in the edge of it there, I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. But it was leaking, so we're going to seal that up, find the pressure. Guess what we think is close, put it back in the car. Today, I've got the fuel pump back off the car. This is the one that's on the car. It's a Carter, made in the USA. This is a vacuum pump up here for the wipers, and this is the fuel pump on the bottom. Now, I've been told this is not the stock pump, but I do have another pump in my stash of spare parts. I don't know if it's been rebuilt or not, but the one I have that's stashed is the original pump, but I'm using this one for now. I'm good with it. That's probably why it's making too much PSI, and probably why there was a fuel regulator mounted on it. This says, if you can someone tell me what this is supposed to fit, carburetor, um, made in the USA, sorry, this is carburetor, I don't know why, carburetor, I thought it said Carter, it doesn't, carburetor, made in the USA, model number 684, I wonder what that's, that's interesting, I'm going to do a little research on that, figure out what it's supposed to fit, but at any rate, the, uh, Fuel pressure regulator is on the output, and there's your adjustment screw right there. And as mentioned, this is supposed to do from 1 to 4 PSI, but I could not get this thing to drop below like 6 pounds, no matter how much I played with that screw. Put it back together, hook it up, and see if we can get this thing to drop down to about 4 PSI, somewhere around there. 3.5 pounds would be nice. See what happens. Okay, so the fuel pump is back mounted on the car. I want to introduce you to another tool that I use. This is a Mighty Vac fluid evacuator. You can use it for sucking oil out of lawnmowers and you can do brake bleeds with it. It works well. It's basically a vacuum chamber. I just pump it up and uh, what I'm going to use it today for is when you put the fuel pump on, you could be cranking for a while. I'm going to use this to suck fuel, create a vacuum through my fuel line, suck all the fuel all the way through right to the fitting at the carburetor then I know it's ready to go. I'm not going to be sitting there cranking and over over for you know, 20, 30 seconds to get fuel through the system. So I'll show you how that works. Okay, so there's my fuel line right here. It's gonna hook up to the carburetor bowl right there. I'm just gonna hold that in there like that. And I'm gonna pump my Mighty Vac here and create a vacuum on that fuel line until I see fuel coming out of there. Then I know that my system is primed. You can hear it sucking and ready to go. I don't know how much you can see with the camera. Sorry, I'm, I do all my work by myself. There, we got fuel moving. I can hear it in the system. I can see it in the line. Can you see bubbles moving in? I don't know. Sucking fuel up. So, awesome little tool. Recommend it. The Mighty Vac. Great tool. Should have bought that at least 15 years ago from my garage. Okay. Regulator's back in. Let's blast her up. Oh, I got six. Huh. I guess we're going in and adjusting that screw. See if we can back it off. Okay, so what I'm finding is, is that as I, if I back out, get it down to that two, three PSI range, um, and then starving for fuel. So I gotta get it into that to three and a half, four range. And um, once I get that pressure right, I'm gonna have to go in and readjust the float level. I suspect it's adjusted for a higher PSI, so uh, we'll get there, but finally getting somewhere. Okay, I backed the screw off a bunch. Let's see what we get. Let's see if it climbs up here. Four and a half. I think I'm gonna try that. I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here, so I'm gonna put it back together and go for a drive. And I'm gonna take the big boy with me when I uh, go around the block. We know we have a 
fuel problem. So. Okay, maybe it's a tad early, but indications are we've got success here. I just took the uh, car around the block a couple times, lugged it up to some pretty good hills in third gear, throttle wide open for probably 30, 40 seconds up a hill, a low RPM. I'm trying to reproduce the, the symptom where the car flooded. And everything's dry and the engine's running great. Well, I have learned a couple things because this is new to me too. I've never worked with fuel regulators before. If the adjustment bolt, the little uh, nut, you back the nut off, there's an adjustment bolt on the regulator I showed it to you. If it's leaking gas there, the diaphragm is shot. It's gotta be, because they don't seal that bolt. The diaphragm was leaking. That's why I could not get my fuel pressure to drop. When I ordered the diaphragm rebuild kit, I put a new diaphragm in it, and the red spring, which is the correct one, I'm getting the fuel pressures I need. But when I first got the car, I didn't recognize that the diaphragm would be shot if it was leaking out the adjustment bolt. It just came to me, a light came on when I was putting it together. I'm like, why don't they seal that bolt, right? It's leaking, I resealed it. Well, that worked, right? Stopped the gas drip. Well, I just put a Band-Aid on it. This is why you seek to understand, not just spray and pray with parts. They come from Holly and the adjustment bolt is not sealed because fuel should not be getting past this diaphragm over to the spring side. That was my first clue that the spring, uh, not the spring, but the diaphragm was leaking. And then I saw this rubber breaking down, I showed you that, and then the light bulb went off. It came on actually. I got her. So I'm not quite brave enough to go all the way to the bottom of the hill, a three mile drive back up. It's getting dark, it's dusk now and I don't need to be rescuing if the car broke down at uh, quarter to nine at night. We're in Canada, you know, it could still snow tonight, so we're not doing that. So uh, I'm gonna call it a success for now, and you live, you learn. I'm, I'm exposing myself, I'm letting you see. I don't know everything, I'm learning too as I go, but once you kind of grasp, understand, and you seek to understand why things are the way they are, there's engineers a lot smarter than you and me that design this stuff. They know what they're doing. You just gotta stop and think once in a while, figure it out. There you go. Humbly signing off, Peace Garage. See you on the next one. I think we got this one sorted out. Have a good day.